The 3-in-1 Smart Car and IoT Learning Kit from SunFounder is a hands-on, all-included electronics kit that is perfect for anyone who wants to learn how to master the Arduino. The kit comes with an Arduino, 22 different sensors and modules, breadboards, jumper wires, and everything else you need to build a bunch of fun and interesting projects. Learn about robotics by building a remote-controlled smart car that can be controlled with an infrared remote controller. Or drive on its own and avoid obstacles or fall on a line. Learn about the Internet of Things with a project that lets you monitor the temperature, humidity, and light level of a room from an app on your smartphone. And build a plant monitor that tracks the temperature, humidity, light intensity, and soil moisture displays it on your smartphone so you can keep your plants watered remotely. It's a super cool kit and I had lots of fun building all the projects in it. So click the link in the description below to order the kit from SunFounder. Like potentiometers, Push buttons are used to supply an electrical input to the Arduino. You can use that input to control what the Arduino does. With potentiometers, we measured analog input voltages. But with buttons, we'll be measuring a digital input voltage. Push buttons can be used to control LEDs, relays, motors, and virtually anything else you can think of. After this video, you'll be able to add push buttons to any project. You'll also learn what floating pins are, why they are a problem, and how to prevent them. You'll learn how to use pull-up and pull-down resistors, how to use the digital read function, and how to use the Arduino's internal pull-up resistor. The push button I'll be using for this project is a basic push button that you can get from pretty much any electronics distributor. These are also known as tactile switches, or momentary push buttons. There are a few different styles of push buttons, but they all do the same thing and that's make a connection between two electrical contacts when you press the button. The two pins on this side of the button are electrically connected, and the two pins on this side are electrically connected too. The button has an electrically conductive material like copper attached to it. When you press down on the button, the circuit becomes closed between the pins on each side, and current is allowed to flow between them. What we're going to do is connect this push button to the Arduino, and write a sketch to detect when the button is pressed. When the button is pressed, the sketch will tell the Arduino to send a high signal to the LED, which will turn it on. I'm going to introduce you to a new function called Digital Read. It's similar to the Digital Write function we learned about earlier, but instead of sending a digital signal to a GPIO pin, it will read a digital signal from them. With Digital Write, we had to tell the function which pin we wanted the signal sent to, and whether the signal should be high or low. With the Digital Read function, we just need to tell it which pin we want to read. Digital read outputs are returns a value of either 1 or 0, depending on the voltage detected at the pin. If there is a high voltage applied to the pin, the digital read function will return a value of 1. If there is a low voltage or no voltage at the pin, it will return a value of 0. Let's set up the circuit now, then we'll take a look at the sketch. Start by inserting your push button across the middle divider of a breadboard. Then take a jumper wire from the 5 volt pin of the Arduino and connect it to the right side of the push button. Next, take a jumper wire from the left side of the push button and plug it into digital pin 7. The cathode of the LED connects to the ground pin of the Arduino, and the LED's anode connects to a current limiting resistor. The resistor value can be anything from about 200 ohms to 1 kilo ohm. The other side of the resistor connects to digital pin 11. Let's see what's going to happen here. One side of the push button is connected to 5 volts. So when we press the button, that 5 volts is going to show up at pin 7 and cause the pin to go high. When we write the sketch, we're going to use the digital read function to detect when that pin goes high. Then we'll use the digital write function to set pin 11 high, and that will make the LED light up. Okay, now let's have a look at the code. The first thing we're going to do is declare a couple variables for the two GPIO pins we're working with. One pin is connected to the push button, so let's call it button pin, and set it equal to pin 7. 
The other pin is connected to the LED, so let's call it LED pin and set it equal to pin 11. When you create variables for pins, you'll usually want to declare them at the top of the program so they become global variables. That way, they can be used in the setup function when you set the pin modes and in the loop function where you actually work with them. In the setup function, we use pin mode to set the button pin, pin 7, as an input. Then we set the LED pin as an output. Going down to the loop function, here we're setting a variable equal to a function. Variables can store constants like integers, floats, and strings, but they can also store functions, and even other variables too. We're going to need another variable to keep track of when the push button is pressed or not. Let's call it button state. Then we set it equal to the digital read function with the button pin variable as the function's argument. So what's going to happen is the digital read function will sit there and listen to the button pin, pin 7. When the button is not pressed, the voltage of the button pin will be low. So the digital read function will return a low value, and that value will be stored in the button state variable. When the button is pressed, the voltage of the button pin will be high so a high value will be stored in the button state variable. We want the LED to turn on when the button is pressed, so we can use the digital write function to send a voltage signal to the LED. The pin we want to send the voltage to is the LED pin, so we use LED pin as the first argument. The second argument tells the function to send either a high or low voltage to the pin, but instead of specifying high or low here, we can use the button state variable, and the function will write whatever value is stored in that variable to the LED pin. So when the button is pressed, the digital read function will return a high value, and that will get stored in the button state variable. Then that high value will get passed along to the digital write function, which will send a high signal to the LED pin. Let's see if this works the way we want it to. So something weird is going on. The LED is just kind of flashing on and off. The digital pins are extremely sensitive. Even weak electromagnetic fields like the one created by my hand can be detected by the Arduino. And these get registered as high signals by the digital read function. Ideally, we want the button pin to detect a high voltage when the button is pressed. But stray electromagnetic fields are causing the button pin to be read as high even when the button isn't pressed. When GPIO pins are allowed to pick up stray electromagnetic fields, they're called floating pins. We need to fix this by making sure the button pin stays low when the button is not pressed. So how can we do that? The easiest way is to connect a wire from the left side of the push button to ground. This will keep the button pin low while the button is not pressed. But we're going to have a problem when we press the button. All of this current will quickly flow to ground, which could damage the Arduino. But what if we put a resistor here? When the button isn't pressed, stray electromagnetic energy can flow to ground through the resistor. And when the button is pressed, current will take the path of least resistance and flow to pin 7. The resistor will also restrict the current flowing to ground when the button is pressed and prevent damage to the Arduino. This is called a pull-down resistor. Pull-down resistors tie a pin to ground to keep it in a low voltage state. There are also pull-up resistors. Pull-up resistors are more common than pull-down resistors, so let's see how those work. Pull-up resistors are tied to a voltage source and keep the Arduino pin high. Here's a similar circuit to the last one, but this one is wired a little differently. Pin 7 is wired to the left side of the push button, but the right side is wired to ground instead of 5 volts. In this circuit, instead of having the LED turn on when pin 7 detects a high signal, the LED will turn on when pin 7 detects a low signal. The pull-up resistor is tied to 5 volts and keeps pin 7 high until the button is pressed. So pressing the button will send a low signal to pin 7. The code is a little bit different too. We still keep the same pin declarations as before. The button pin is still an input, and the LED pin is still an output. 
We still want to digital read the button pin and store it in the button state variable. But now we want the Arduino to send a high signal to the LED pin when the button state is low. The previous code we used sent a high signal to the LED pin when the button state was high. So we can delete this part. Now we need to use an if statement. If button state equals low. This double equal sign is called a relational operator. We'll learn more about that later, but for now just know that it means equals to. So if button state equals low, which will happen when the button is pressed, then digital write to the LED pin high. If button state equals high, which happens when the button is not pressed, then digital write to the LED pin low. I'm using two if statements here. There's a better way to do this using what's called an if else statement, but we're gonna learn more about that later and for now I just wanna keep it simple. So let's upload this to the Arduino and see if it works. So here I have the circuit wired up, and when I press the button, the LED turns on. The floating pin problem seems to be solved. The LED doesn't flicker when I move my hand around the circuit. The pull-up and pull-down resistors I just showed you are external circuit components, but the Arduino actually has an internal pull-up resistor that you can use for the same purpose. To use the Arduino's internal pull-up resistor, we use the same code we used for the external pull-up resistor but we just changed the second argument in the pin mode function from input to input underscore pullup. Then you can wire the circuit without a pullup resistor connected to five volts. The internal pullup resistor uses one less component and makes the circuit a bit simpler. In this section of the course, we've covered a lot of things that will help you get started using the Arduino. In the next section, we're going to take an in-depth look at Arduino programming. That way, you'll gain a solid foundation of programming knowledge, and that will help you understand what's going on in the sketches we're going to use later in the course. SunFounder is my go-to source for sensors, modules, and other parts for the Arduino and Raspberry Pi. They have a huge selection of STEM, robotics, and IoT kits, and lots of useful sensors and modules. Every product has an online tutorial with wiring diagrams and example code. They also offer free shipping on all orders, with no minimum. Give them a try at www.sunfounder.com next time you need to order some parts.